We'll call a regular meeting in the New Alm City Council for December 4th, 2018, 4.30 p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is your consent agenda items. I'll offer a motion to approve those. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items. Any discussion on any? I think so. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 2A, conduct a public hearing on the proposed changes to the New Alm City Charter and to conduct a second reading of the proposed ordinance number 18-027, fifth series, adopting the amendments to the Home Rule Charter. Roger. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, at the first reading, um, we indicated the change that the Charter Commission had made uh, regarding the section of the Charter that dealt with the appointment of certain officers of the fire department. Um, this would be the second reading. We have unanimous attendance of the city council, which would be required for the adoption of this. And if you want me to read it the second time, I will. Unless... <coughs> but it's a public hearing too, though, right? Right. Yes. So if you want to... We'll open up the public hearing first. Anybody like to be heard? On the city charter? Seeing nobody. Nobody. So not hearing anybody, I'm going to offer a resolution to uh, close the public hearing and waive the reading and adopt the ordinance 18-027, fifth series, amending the home charter, home rule charter of the city of New Ulm. And I want to thank all the people that are involved in the um, charter commission. So they did good work on this. Second. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution. We have <coughs> reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 3A. Consider a, a motion approving the issuance of a taxi license to Red Ride Cab Shuttle and Delivery LLC for one taxi vehicle. I'll offer the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think we have the owner in the audience. Anything new? Yeah. Anything you'd like to say? Just step up to the mic, little, name and address for the record. advertising here for uh, a minute. I guess uh, I do have a question. Um, so after this, I, ne I need to know an opening date. I know we had talked before, and I, I was that way I could open like two weeks ago. But I just need to know when I can get a license issued. And um, It was published on November 24th, so the first available date would be December 24th. December 24th is an opening day for me. <clears throat> okay, well, other than that, no, I'm good. I just want to open up right away. Maybe I can get issued a temporary license to go right away. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 30 days. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that. Oh, okay. Well, I thought I would try anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's your hours, and you're, you're going to be lo you're local. Yep. Yep, I'll be in town um, all day, um, you know, all night, um, like 5 a.m. till 2 a.m. As soon as my workload picks up a little more, I'm going to hire somebody, you know, uh, when things get going a little bit, you know, I'm sure I'll be slow at first, but once the name gets out there, I feel that uh, I'll be doing pretty good and sure, ho hopefully hire a couple people and yeah. keep things going. Great. Good luck. Just going to add, maybe you can state your name and address for the record. Oh, yeah, we should do that. Oh, yeah, it's Jeffrey Bray and 104 West Blessum and Hanska. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yep. So you can start Christmas Eve day. Yeah, have a bunch of candy canes hap ready and everybody <laughs> come on so. all right there you go <laughs> <laughs> any more discussion seeing none all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. opposed no motion carries congratulations thank you item 3b consider a motion to approve the issuance of a temporary on sale intoxicating liquor license for state street theater company i'll offer the motion second we have a motion and a second and that's for January 19, 2019. I guess I got a question. We're always issuing these temporary license. Can't we issue permanent ones for something like I that? I think I've asked that before. No, and I, don't think I, we can, and right? I believe they're limited to three a year. Uh, this would be 2019. Is it three a year, or is it a certain amount of time in between each one? I can't remember what the uh, limitations I have are. the code here, but I know um, there are restrictions on how yeah. frequently they just can't be yeah. getting these on a weekly basis yeah. so and I think this would qualify I know they've had several mm -hmm. so far in 2018 so 
I can look into and double check those regulations. But. And it might be that this is probably most cost pro prohibitive for the, them to go by individual licensing versus the full fledged license. Yeah. yeah, maybe we should check it out once. Any more discussion? We had a motion, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item 4A. An oral presentation conducted by Police Chief Borkert relating to the Departmental Performance Goals. Platform Goals, sorry about that. Um, Mr. City Council President, members of the Council, um, my name is Dave Borkert, I'm Police Chief for the City of New Ulm. And I'd like to thank everyone for this opportunity to kind of go over a little bit what our platform goals are. I think this is a, a nice opportunity and probably nice timing. I'm coming up to the first of the year. So um, <clears throat> one thing is that, you know, and just in order, I have, I have three. And, you know, this is something I think in law enforcement, it's always fluid. It's always changing with the times. Times are changing fairly quickly now, um, just in general, just from an, uh, I guess, from an overall industry standard. Um, but the first one is focus on working with the community to promote better law enforcement responses to individuals suffering from mental illness. You know, in the interest of time, I'm, I'm certainly conscious of that. I could, you know, we could probably talk about this for literally for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I believe when you probably have an opportunity to go to different conventions and conferences uh, with city government, county government, um, state government, this is a really big issue and uh, extremely big challenge right now. Um, in law enforcement, you know, we know that we're dealing with more mental health challenges than we ever have before. And there's some reasons behind that. There's contributing factors involved. Um, again, I could, I could probably go into that for, you know, for half an hour, 45 minutes. But there's, there's, reasons, in, there's reasons behind that. But the bottom line is we're dealing with a challenge um, in my 25 years of law enforcement. You know, we always dealt with this. This is always something that we were trained on as far as a law enforcement officer when we went through um, our various schools that we go to and later on when we go to the skills component of our training, um, which is kind of like a, a general, it's, it's a very general version of police academy. Um, but we, we would certainly train on mental health um, responses. But we, we really didn't see it at the level that we're seeing it today. We're encountering it at a much higher level. And this is something that I think for, you know, a better, safer response for the community and also for the safety of the officers, it's something that we need to address with training. And um, right now, I'm, I'm proud to say that I think we're on the cutting edge of that as far as the Nolan Police Department. We have two officers that are trained and certified by, it's called the Barbara Schneider um, CIT Critical um, Incident Training. It's, it's uh, there's different versions of it, but we chose the Barbara Schneider. Um, it's more, it's Minnesota based. It's based out of Minneapolis, which is, which is a benefit as far as getting additional support. But we have our law enforcement officers. Right now we have two in-house certified instructors. In fact, we'll be going over it this Thursday. So if anybody would ever have, if you'd like to kind of get a little bit of an overview, um, we're starting, or one of the classes will be this Thursday at three at the training room and then we'll have another one the following week but the bottom line with this is that we don't there's really not going to be any ending in, involved with this we're going to constantly be training on on these type of responses the post board peace officer standard and training board that's our licensing board um, for all law enforcement officers in Minnesota they've addressed this that we're required to have 16 hours of of training continuing training on this during a licensing period, which is three years. So we're certainly, we're not looking at just meeting the minimum mandatory, but we're looking at making this really a focus because I think it's important for the community. Um, one out of five individuals, either they themselves are suffering from mental illness or they have a family member that's suffering from some form of mental illness. So it's really, it's really an important thing. And like I said, I, I think as far as the law enforcement industry, Overall, I mean, I'm going to say that as a law enforcement officer, I think we can do better just in law enforcement in general. And I'm proud to say that the Noah Police Department is doing 
is certainly having a lot of focus on this. So, like I said, we're, I'm going to say we're cutting edge on this right now, and we're even, like other law enforcement agencies have been conferring with us and kind of looking at our model and trying to adopt that within their own agency. You know, every, every region, every, you know, in, in law enforcement, we have several law enforcement agencies, you know, many cities, many counties, but, you know, every, every region looks just a little bit different. But, um, you know, this is certainly that something that we're addressing and, and we're really working for. Um, so that's something as far as our platform that, as far as updates, you're gonna hear a lot from me regarding that and hopefully you're hearing um, positive things from the community and from the, the law enforcement officers as well. Um, and then as far as community involvement, um, law enforcement officers and staff representing the city as community ambassadors with various local civil and professional organizations. That's something that we have been doing. Um, we did a lot more of that pre-recession. During the recession, just with the, with the cuts, we really had to kind of change the way we we're doing a lot of that. Um, we used to have like a community, a community ambassador, a police officer that was representing us on, on various organizations. And we still have some of that, but we probably cut down to about 25%. Um, for the most part, either myself or the chief, um, retired chief Wheeland was, was representing the department generally on that because you know we we're re really watching the overtime. And, and I'm, not, I'm certainly not trying to say that we're just gonna be having a, a major shift in overtime or anything, but we're gonna change our, our priorities. I think it's important. I get a lot of feedback from the community. Um, they'd like to see an officer that's actually you know out there working the night shift and some of the things that they're encountering so like when we're talking about like USAC I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on them but underage substance abuse coalition um, you know they like to see actually when they're ask, asking questions when they have the Q&A from the panel um, being able to ask the officer that maybe what they encountered at 3 in the morning and, and things like that regarding a, a certain um, subject or, or issue so I think that that's something that we can do very low cost and I think we're going to be, you know, it's going to pay dividends within the community. I think it's important that we're moving in that direction. And then um, also staff development with a strong focus on various individual subject matter expertise. So the leadership style that, that I practice, that I've always practiced or that I, I subscribe to, it's called the transformational leadership style. Basically, if you can imagine... I have subject matter experts. It's kind of like what the city manager would be doing with department heads. And that's, that's what I've always practiced. I think it works very well, um, especially in a law enforcement agency because especially in a law enforcement agency like we have that we have the luxury to work in um, because we have law enforcement officers that fortunately they, they stay around a while. We have retention and I think that's a positive reflection on, on all of you as city councilors and, and on the city as a whole. But because we have that retention, we have individuals staying here for a while, you know, I can certainly focus a lot of training um, on the officers and having them become subject matter experts on their, on their own and basically being able to confer with them. And again, kind of treating them almost like a, like a department head, you know, if you're thinking of certain things that we're providing, because we provide things in the community like um, the ALICE training, that's been very, very popular um, as far as active shooter response. So Officer Murphy, like he basically represents, he, he acts kind of like a subject matter expert in that area. And I'm conferring with him, I'm working with the community, getting their, their input. And then we're, you know, we're certainly making tweaks to just like any program, but that's essentially that's how I'm, I'm handling as far as the department. And we've been, we've been focused on that for a while. <coughs> Um, it seems to work very well, but I, I think that that's a, a benefit to the community. So when I'm talking about, you know, goals and the platform, the department, those are the three primary areas that we're working on. As far as having um, the subject matter experts in different areas, I'm even thinking about, you know, a, maybe a better way of handling or, or tackling certain um, initiatives that we have, something like the blade ordinance. You know, if I have a couple subject matter experts from our own department that are working with, you know, other city department heads, working with myself as far as trying to be, you know, as efficient and as effective as we possibly can be. And again, that you can transfer that knowledge and you can apply that to different areas in, in law enforcement as well. Any questions on that? <coughs> Could you expand a little bit? I think last after the last meeting, um, we had a conversation with you about the blight ordinance and 
and maybe kicking that back to the forefront for this coming year in 2019. And we've had a couple of weeks to give that some thought. Uh, I know Councillor Max has been very involved in that topic. And can you uh, talk about that a little bit more? What were your thoughts are on how to how to get that back to a, a headliner issue? Well, I appreciate you you bringing that up and giving me an opportunity to maybe expand on that a little bit. Um, though we just had a department meeting last Thursday, and we. We discussed this among other things and you know what one way and one way I'd like to lead the department on that is you know breaking it up by areas of town so you know I think of like Broadway and Center you know if you're gonna break it into four areas of town having one sergeant basically overseeing each section <coughs> and then you know having the officers and I think the assignments having more of an, a permanent assignment for the officers I think is beneficial I'd even like to see that um, with other areas like even working with the community on, on other issues that maybe come up um, dogs that are on their leash I mean that's just something that just popped in my head that just I just recently um, fielded a phone call on but where that that one certain subject or, or all the subjects basically would probably get bounced off of a certain officer that's assigned a certain area so Mankato does that and they have a lot of success with that it you kind of take ownership for a certain section of town so even if all of a sudden there's a lot of burglaries <coughs> in one area garage burglaries you're almost kind of like you know what's you're almost like it, it takes like a little more personal and that's that's the kind of involvement we want from like as a law enforcement officer I mean I, I can remember when we would have garage burglaries or something like that if I was working the night shift before I took it personal and I think that's the kind of engagement you want from your officers and that's certainly something I'm going to try to promote so you know if you know just to kind of expand mm -hmm. owning that section of town you know we certainly want them patrolling everything and we're you know we don't have a, a large enough force and we're a small enough community where you can't just have one section and that's all you're working on like when you think of the f fourth precinct in North Minneapolis where that's the only area you're working that that precinct but I I would like to divide that up as far as again that community outreach whether that's national night out picnics or if that's certain issues that are coming up with you know dogs running loose or um, issues like with blight where you kind of own that section of town and I think that that's a very easy way to manage it as far as even as far as accountability again I, I'm very proud of the department I think they do very good work but if there if there is something that's not being followed up properly I've talked with some counselors some very obvious violations maybe with blight where it's just like okay I, I can't really explain that I'd like to know an officer that's assigned that section of town how they're going to explain that how something like that could be missed on a regular basis so I I believe that's a very good starting ground and again it's it's fluid we always want to go back we want to you know see if there's something we can do differently or you know practice maybe a slightly different model but I think that's a very good start and that's something that I, like I said I certainly broached with our department and they're very supportive of it they, they believe it would work really well I like it too. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Well, we certainly wish you well in your tenure as chief, and we, we were wanting to do that a couple of weeks ago, and it just time got away from us. So, uh, we wish you very well in your your new uh, position as chief of police of our our fine city. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, and I appreciate this opportunity to be able to just expand a little bit on what the platform is, and you know, if there's any questions or anything, you know certainly from Mr. Council President, from you and from the members of the council, but as a community at, at large, I, I certainly want to have that um, that opportunity where people feel comfortable calling if they have a concern. There's there's nothing too small to, to you know, bring it to our attention because that's what they're they're paying taxes for and that's you know that's what we really want to be able to provide as a as a department, as a professional department. So again, thank you again for this opportunity. Any other questions? Others? Anybody have anything? Thanks again. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> okay, item 5A, number one, consider an application from William Swan requesting a variance to reduce the size of the back setback on Crestwood Lane side of the property from 30 feet to 18 feet on the property located at 1505 Southridge Road. Go ahead. Hi, William Swan, 1505 Southridge Road. Uh, I'd like to add a shed to my property and uh, if for those who are familiar with the property that's surrounded by roads on three sides <laughs> and uh, so the setbacks there is no side yard that doesn't <coughs> have extensive setbacks that penetrate into the property 
So I'm asking for this variance so I can place a shed next to the driveway on the driveway side, um, as far up the driveway as, as I have pavement. I'd like to add that the, plan, the Board of Zoning Adjustment recommended approval <coughs> at the November 29th, 2018 meeting. Uh, we've got three examples where we've done the side yard setback in the previous, for the record. So we didn't see any objections. We had no oral or written no uh, neighbor, comments no from the neighbors. The neighbors. And it's for a 10 by 12 garden shed. Mm -hmm. One comment I want to make is, in my mind, I dealt with this for years as a building official. This is actually when somebody should come in for the variance request. It's unique. Three front yard setbacks with a 30-foot setback, chewing up a lot of property. Uh, I mean, I don't have an issue with it at all. And your good news is you were probably informed for the 10 by 12 shed you don't need a building permit. <laughs> yeah, I called the building uh, department first. <laughs> with, with that being said, motion to approve application of William Swan requesting a variance to reduce the size of the setback on the Crestwood Lane side of the property from 30 feet to 18 feet on the property located at 1505 Southridge. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you, Bill. Thank Thanks. you. Item 6A, consider a motion to adopt and give the grow donation program guidelines and project programs to be marketed for donation opportunities. Tom, that's a mouthful. Tom Schmitz, Park and Recreation Department. Uh, President Schmitz, counselors, uh, you have before you our first list of items to be a placed onto the list back uh, on March 20th. You authorized the establishment of the give and grow donation program. And just recently, November 15th, the Park and Recreation Commission recommended that you list these on our Give and Grow Donation Program list, including the German Park Outdoor Performing Arts Center Amphitheater, park benches, trees, playgrounds and playground components, outdoor and indoor fitness equipment, splash pads, shelters, programs, and special events. They will be marketed on the city website and elsewhere as donation opportunities for individuals, organizations, and businesses. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Hillside retaining walls, can we put that on there too? <laughs> 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 Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> We'll take that. donations to anything. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All those who want the walls, let us know. Right. With the November 15th meeting on the Park and Rec Commission recommending to us, I'll uh, motion to approve the adoption of the Give and Grow Donation Program <coughs> guidelines and the following projects and programs to be marketed for donation opportunities. German Park Outdoor <coughs> Performing Arts Center and Amphitheater, benches, trees, playgrounds and playground components, outdoor and indoor fitness equipment, splash pads, shelters, programs, events, and anything else you'd like to donate for. Yes. That was the last Second. line, right? Mm -hmm. that was <laughs> <event>. Anything <laughs> else you'd like to donate for. And a retaining for. wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a motion and a second? Yep. Yep, second. All right. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Tom. You. Thank you. Item 6B12, consider the following actions associated with the Emerson Union Apartment mm -hmm. Project at 15 North State Street. Approve the resolution, rescinding the resolution number 15-21 and number 2. Approve a new resolution adopting the termination of the development agreement. Mr. Schnobert. Yes, Council President Schmitz, members of the City Council. Um, at uh, your first meeting in November, you approved uh, three different actions associated with the Emerson Union Apartment Project. And um, at that time, uh, we advised you that that was kind of phase one and that there, that there would be a phase two. And so uh, at tonight's meeting, we're looking at uh, the phase two items. Um, back in January 2015, uh, the City Council approved the final plot of the State Street Theater subdivision. Um, in March of that year, then you also approved a development agreement and a declaration that was attached to the development agreement. So that particular development agreement was associated with the plot. Last month, 
you also considered another development agreement, but that was associated with the TIF district that was established. So we have two development agreements, but they're completely separate and they address different issues. So the one of the, as I mentioned, uh, the declaration is a part of that development agreement. And the declaration uh, addressed the fact that we had two property owners within one building. And so we had a number of issues that uh, were of concern to the city at the time. We only had one owner, so we didn't know exactly what was going to happen to that uh, second lot. We kind of knew what was going to happen with, uh, with one lot. So at that time, um, we had a joint set of utility services. We had some um, building code issues, and uh, we also had some uh, zoning <coughs> issues. And so that's why the uh, declaration was uh, necessary. The declaration is an agreement between the two property owners. So at this time, staff uh, believes, or we, we have uh, two owners, we've got two defined projects or activities that are taking place within the building. And so staff believes that um, it would be appropriate to um, rescind the uh, resolution that adopted the original uh, development agreement and then to approve uh, the termination of development agreement. Um, we believe that through the zoning ordinance, our building code, and PUC policies that we'll be able to address any issues that um, come up um, on the property. Um, we also believe that um, uh, the, uh, the services for the buildings are going to be separated for the two lots, with the exception of the um, steam um, uh, item or the um, steam service to the building and in that particular case we will be securing an easement that will allow us uh, uh, the right to install the service but then also the right of access to the building we'll have two valves inside the building so that we can separate one from the other if that becomes necessary so the actions, again, that we are looking for um, tonight are to rescind the resolution and then to approve um, the termination of the development agreement. Um, City Attorney Hippert has uh, been working on this matter um, as well, and he may have some thoughts to share about this. David. Yeah, Mr. President, just briefly, uh, I think Dave has summed up the situation very well. Uh, we've had a total change in the situation at this property. Uh, between the two owners um, they've been sharing with us uh, their current version of their own declarations or mutual agreement a copy of that is attached I think it's maybe not quite in its final form but uh, the plan would be this I think they're looking at doing their closing for the apartment part of this on December 18th and they would like to get the documents that involve the city finalized and these would be the last two um, so our hope would be if the council would agree to take both of these actions, we could get them signed and they would be sent up there and this would be contingent on them signing these new declarations. And you don't have to read through them all unless you want to, but what's important is in the new declarations in section 10.10, .10, um, there are a number of provisions that do continue to benefit the city. They have to provide us with, always with the contact person for each property, as Dave mentioned, they have to give us the easements and the access that we need for the utilities. There's an indemnification uh, if anyone were to challenge um, those provisions in 10.10. .10. And they also um, have to copy us with any changes to their agreement between themselves. So I think we've looked out for the city's interest to the extent they're still there on these properties. And uh, I would ask that the council approve this so that they can go ahead with their closing. Thank you, Andrew. You'd want two separate motions here, I'm assuming. I think we have to have one to I rescind the resolution, yes. I'll go ahead and offer the first one, a resolution, waive the reading, rescinding the adoption of resolution 15-21. Second. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? 
Seeing none, finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. And, and with uh, that, oh, oh, go ahead. I'll offer the resolution we're either reading approving the termination of the development agreement with the stated conditions. I'll second. We have a motion and a second off the resolution. We have reading. Any more discussion on it? Seeing none. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Item 7A. Consider a resolution to accept donations to the Duwamish Police Department to be used for toward the Shop with a Hero program. I'll offer the resolution to waive the reading to accept the following donations to the New Orleans Police Department to use towards the Shop with a Hero program. 3M Corporation, $400. James and Susan Hogan, $250. Second. We have a motion and a second off the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. And the Mayor will take care of the thank yous. Item 7B, consider resolution designating the 2019 election poll places within the City of New Orleans for something to Minnesota State Statute 24, excuse me, 204B.16, Subdivision 1. Nicole, you got some on that? This is something we're now required by state cha statute to do every year. I know there's no election in 2019, but we had to designate the polling places anyway in case there would be any kind of emergency election or anything. Um, we've left three of the polling places the same. That would be Redeemer, Lutheran, um, the Civic Center, and <laughs> where else did we go? New Orleans Civic Center. The Community Center. Yes. Um, and then Harmon Park, we've left as an alternate just because um, of the possible construction at Vogel um, in t in over the year, and we don't know what that will be. Um, and we haven't thought of any other possible alternates, alternates at this point, but we'd like to leave that one at Vogel um, or go back to Vogel and just have Harmon as the alternate. Sounds good. Ruth Ann. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Ruth Ann Webster, 820 South German Street. Uh, I'm here as the president of the uh, League of Women Voters. Uh, as some of you might know, because you've gotten an email from one of our members, uh, during the um, primary, the Our League of Women Voters uh, did a, a poll watch uh, of all the polling places. Um, and we looked at a number of uh, different uh, things, uh, and most things went very well. Um, but we saw a lot of problems uh, with the uh, Harmon Park site, and I do commend the finance director for working on some of those problems for the, gen for the general election, like the layout of the space and the noise, the high noise level uh, in the space. Uh, but, but the things that cannot be fixed about that Harmon Park site uh, is that it's uh, got a very small parking lot uh, and it sits on a very busy street. North Garden is a feeder street uh, and you're essentially asking uh, people to uh, either uh, be lucky enough to come at a time when there's a space in that little small parking lot uh, and then have to get out onto a busy street or you're asking people to park on the street and then cross the busy street uh, to get into Harmon Park. Uh, and we don't think these, we think these problems uh, are of such a magnitude uh, that we would ask that you please keep looking uh, so that we have, I believe there are enough buildings in uh, the fourth ward that uh, could be used. Uh, if you just keep looking, that you will not have to use Harmon Park uh, as an alternative. Hopefully, we won't have to use anything in 2019. Well, that's um, right, right, right. If you have suggestions right. for, because we'll have to declare again next year for 2020. Yes, we are open to any suggestions. Good. We have thank been you, and we'll think about that. Find anything, thank you, so. thank you. I agree. I think we need. That's the complaint. It's not my ward, but I did hear complaints about that as well as we probably all did. And is the middle school an option? I mean, I don't. Schools aren't that. an option. Schools aren't an option anymore. All okay. right. Yeah, I'd like to add. I had several calls and emails about it, and you know, concerns about 
Harmon Park. I bet the so. league will come up with something. They're pretty smart. Yeah. Group. They're they're active. <laughs> they're active. It's biting out in the paper now. <laughs> Name and address for the record, please. Yes. Hi, Andrea Bedker, 21 North Payne Street. And um, I know that there is not an election next year, but just also wanted to second um, what Ruth Ann was saying about that polling place location. Um, I, as a citizen that lives very close to that park and has small children, I do plan to go to the safety commission with some of the other safety concerns I have about that park and parking and traffic in general but specifically in relation to having that as a polling place I was really um, personally impacted um, by some of that excess traffic because I was the person that called 911 on the pedestrian that was hit trying to cross the street to vote that morning and so um, adding some of that extra traffic and some of the extra vehicles and the dusky mornings and just um, I, I feel like our city could definitely do a better job um, finding another polling location, whether that be the country club or um, one of the other churches that may be available. But um, I just wanted to get on the record that I feel like we definitely need to look for a better location just because of um, what had happened that day and with all the traffic and everything that I had seen um, in the early morning. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So when we just have to have something designated, I would assume we have a date by uh, something in 2000 by, Dece by the 30 December 31st of every year we have to designate for the following year and our biggest concern is that Vogel Arena is going to be under construction for a year and a half potentially and and we don't know to what extent it will be or what right. extent the building at what point where it will be available not available right. so. so having the Harmon Park as a second place does that make that I mean, is that for sure then, or do we have to have an alternate visit, an alternate listed? I think we're better off having an alternate listed. Otherwise, we'll have to just redesignate again at some point. If we couldn't use Harmon, I mean, or use Vogel at that point, we have to do something else. And there has to be some very extenuating circumstances to, to switch a polling place once it's designated. So I think it's better to have that alternate up front. But like I said, we're open to anything. The challenge being that the building has to be in the ward or in close proximity to that ward. So if we could find something different even in 2019, mm -hmm. right. could it still be used instead of Har Harmon? Yeah, I, I think we could change Absolutely. at some point. Okay. Chances are we won't need anything right. in 2019. Right. But maybe just keep But we will in 2020. We'll need for okay. March, August, and November because there will be a presidential primary then. Mm -hmm. We have to officially designate it yeah. as a council. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'll get it figured out. I'll offer the resolution waive the reading, reading designating the 2019 election polling places. Second. Listed. We have a motion to second to offer the resolution waived reading. Any more discussion? Well, we're not, I, but I hear we're concerns about not approving Harmon Park, but we'll wait for an alternate. So we're temporarily approving Harmon Park then? That's what I was asking my, you. It's yeah. In my mind, it's temporary. They want to leave it on there. Temporary. Temporary. Now until we Chances are we else. won't have until to use it anyway. something else. We're all in consensus then. All right, thank nope. you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Off resolution. Waive reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 7C, consider resolution authorizing the Naran of New Alb to hang colorful stripes of decorative cloth on Minnesota and Center Street in observance of the season of Fashing. <coughs> I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, authorizing the Fashing decorations on Minnesota Street from the south side of Center Street to 2nd North Street and hang col colorful strips of cloth on lamp posts from Center Street to 3rd North Street in observation of the season of Fashing beginning Sunday. February 17th, 2019, to approximately Sunday, March 3rd, 2019. Second. We have a motion to second off the resolution. Waive reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 7D, consider a motion authorizing the establishment of a complete count committee in support of the 2020 census. All right, good evening. Go ahead. Uh, John Nisley, planner with the city of New Ulm. Uh, Council President Schmitz, 
members of the city council on april 1st 2020 uh, the united states census bureau uh, will be um, undertaking the census in accordance with the u.s constitution um, accurate census data is vitally important for minnesota for a number of reasons um, one of them being that it is used to determine how many seats we will have as a state in the u.s house of representatives um, and in 2020 in particular there is concern that we may lose one of those seats um, the results are also used for other uh, designating other local uh, legislative districts um, and other uh, s state uh, districts as well for new homes specifically an accurate count is important um, so we receive our fair share of state federal grants and uh, aid our economic development support um, housing assistance and transportation funding now, New Ulm, historically speaking, has had really um, high partic participation rates in the past. In 2000, we had 87% uh, mail-back participation rates. And then in 2010, we had 89% um, mail-back rates. So we do have high rates, but that still means there's, you know, even in 2010, we still had roughly 1,500 people who didn't participate. Um, that is where the complete com counts committee is important. The completes count committee would reach out to those folks who did not mail back their census information and try to get them uh, to complete that information. Um, so a typical complete count committee consists of roughly eight to 10 members from both the public and private sector. Um, and the mayor, along with help with si from city staff, uh, would select those members um, to play a role in that committee. So um, the first step in this um, is to have the city council uh, prove that the mayor sign a letter and send it to uh, the regional uh, census bureau in Chicago, um, notifying them that um, we are interested in starting a complete counts committee for the city of New Ulm. Do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? I guess, have we done that in the past? Have they had this, this opportunity to do it in the past? So this would be the first time we've had a complete count committee. Correct. Okay. Mayor, you're up for the task? Best of my ability. Okay. With that, I'll go ahead and offer the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion <coughs> carries. Thank you. Item 7E, consider a motion approving the City of New Ulm Emergency Operation Plan. Before I make a motion. Oh. Did you want to say something on that, Dave? No. Nope. City Council President Schmitz, members of the council, I don't have anything specific. I had handed out the um, EOP. <coughs> The last council meeting if there you know if you have any questions I'm, I'll certainly try to address them otherwise I don't have anything in addition to to comment on but I'm certainly here if I can answer a question or address a comment yeah. my only comment is I want to thank the chief and I also want to thank the emergency operation committee I actually read through the document something that does interest me uh, one of the items it's come a long ways from originally 25 30 years ago when we started the first one it looks good hopefully we never have to use it that's Thank true you. yeah I th what i saw is a lot this year a lot of the changes were name changes and um so not not major plan issues so it's more just cleanup yeah i would call it cleanup what you say and Basically. some techni yeah. new Th technology New te yeah yeah Th thank you yeah that that's accurate i mean each each year we try to update it and i um, you know, our committee, when we sit down, we have um, Fire Chief Mockle, um, Christy Holes, we have, have, you know, several people, Kathy Schaefer. So we really do it in a collaborative group. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we break it down um, chapter by chapter. So we're not rushing through anything because we, you know, we take it serious if there's something that um, needs corrected or, or, you know, we, we certainly research it. Um, you know, we'll wait for the, the next, you know, if there's a question that comes up when we're addressing one chapter, we don't just rush through it. We'll, we'll research it and we'll address it the, the next month or even a couple months later. So we, we take the job serious and it's, it is we, it's not just me, Dave Borkert. I'm, I'm really relying on other subject matter experts, you know, people that can uh, provide some information like Chief Mockle, you've been very helpful with the process. 
So like I said, it's there's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, literally in January now, we'll start over again and we'll start breaking it down by chapters and, and going through the process again. But just to um, address your earlier comment, Councilor Schultz and, and uh, Christian, this year it seemed like we go through it each year and there's always something that kind of jumps out just because everything's changing there's different personnel that that changes but realistically that's pretty much what the changes involved was you know probably someone else is in a new position or something like that very very minor changes like that with that I'll offer a motion you. to approve the emergency management operation plan second we have a motion and a second any more discussion Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 7F, consider resolution authorizing <coughs> a loan from the revolving loan fund 250 to a tax increment financing district H9 in the amount of $20,000 to pay a portion of the plan review fee for the Emerson Union project at 15 North State Street. Dave. Uh, Council President Schmitz, members of the City Council, uh, at your June 6, 2017 meeting, you um, approved three resolutions supporting uh, the Emerson Union um, apartment project. One of those resolutions was a letter of support for the project, and in that letter, the council agreed to make a, a donation of $20,000 to the project. Um, that $20,000 was to be used to pay for a portion of the building permit costs, specifically the plan review fee. Um, the source of funding to pay that uh, cost was to be revenue generated by the TIF district. Uh, right now we have no revenue in that particular account, so we need to make an inner fund loan <coughs> to that account in order to pay that expense because that expense is going to be due um, within uh, probably a couple weeks and then we will use TIF revenues as they are paid to compensate the city for that uh, transfer. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Dave? With that being said, I'll offer a resolution, weigh the reading, and authorizing a loan from the Revolving Loan Fund, Fund 250, to Tax Increment Financing District H9 in the amount of $20,000 to pay a portion of the planning review fee for the Emerson Union Project at 15 North State. Second. We have a motion to second offer a resolution, weigh the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 7G, consider replacement of the skylight at the library or remove it and cover the opening. Ellen? President Schmitz, Councillors, um, the, as stated in the um, overview that we had some issues with our skylight here at City Hall uh, with the coating coming off, um, had that inspected took them over to the library look at that one and that skylight is the panels actually are delaminating um, themselves are coming apart and that's part of the structural stability of the skylight itself so we made contact with the um, one of the companies um, out of the cities that um, supplied that skylight got a quote from them for that 41,641 and from New Ohm Glass for 41,644 um, presented that to the library board and wanted to know what the alternatives were and one of the alternatives to take the skylight off and make a flat roof out of it basically frame structure inside and make a flat roof on top of it and that budget numbers between that 15 20 thousand somewhere in that area um, being the money's coming out of the 290 account the library board said let you guys make the decision. Of course it is. So, um, some of the uh, variables um, on the enclosure is how to finish off the inside, the underneath of that. As you can see in that one picture, um, looking up, um, you've kind of got the same grid system as you have in the ceiling of the library itself. It's just open up to the skylight. There are some lighting components in there that um, I'm not quite sure how you get up there and change those lights out. Um, or 
leave the skylight up there. There is some light that comes through that skylight, not not a terrible amount, <coughs> but um, and that other picture, there's two pictures of the existing skylight, the way it sits up there now, and making an assumption that the that skylight was probably replaced about the same time as the skylight at City Hall was put on back in 96, 97. Um, the skylights that were originally put on when the building was built, you can see they were kind of a dome shaped with there's lit, looks like there's eight little bays um, separating the, the skylight there. And that was replaced with the, the uh, angled skylight, I'm assuming to shed water better. If we eliminated uh, skylights, wouldn't it be more energy efficient? Be some, yeah. I mean, it's these skylights are have some R value to them, not a lot, but yeah, there would be insulation in that that framed out section, that flat roof. So, would it hurt our lighting within the building? Are we going to have to add lighting if we eliminate them? Or I think we're going to have to address the lighting issue in there. There, like I said, there are lights in there. How to get up there and get get those situated with that being open we may be able to come down from the top side and uh and do something and put in some leds or something that looks like there's fluorescence up there now so what's your guesstimate cost on that are we going to end up costing about the same thing as if we would replace the skylights that's a good question that 15 to 20 is i, know. I made it pretty wide um i talked to a couple of different contractors um, but there's still some unknowns yeah. in that on how to <coughs> how to get in there and frame it out and make it <coughs> somewhat <coughs> hurty on the bottom side. Right. Not that right. people are going to see it a lot, but we're going to have to have some type of finish. Or do you look at trying to do some type of modular thing and just kind of build it to cap, sit over the top of that concrete um, curb up there? And have the finishes on there already, and just kind of piece it together, and then roof it in. Um, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. Uh, my comment on it is, I mean, since the library board really doesn't have a take on it, it's coming out of the city funds. I would just as soon see the thing closed up and done with. That skylight has been a thorn, and in my era, it was a thorn. It was in my previous building officials' era. It's just been a pain from leaking to fixing to whatnot. I just assume spend the money, fix it one time, and 20 years from now, I'll go back and re-roof it when the rest of the building has to be roofed. Yeah. That's my take on it. So we could go out and get some estimates and bring it back to us, right? Right, yeah, we'll have to go out and get get something drawn up on it and get some get some bids on it and see mm -hmm. what where it's gonna come in at. Like I said, these are pretty rough mm -hmm. guesstimate numbers for the, mm -hmm. the enclosure. I guess, Elwood, your estimates would include a full lighting package with the, the framing or the building? If we it didn't, didn't look into that. I didn't. I, I guess I think I would like could. to see us come back with complete package. a complete package. Right. You know, I mean, that's. It and I guess maybe if, you know, if we have to do it right to retain an architect to tie onto it, you know, or to make it look attractive or have a committee look at it, possibly. Well, I think we're going to have to get an, an engineer involved to draw something mm -hmm. up for the for the structure itself. The lighting, I think we can um, take a look at that and get that internally, but um, yeah, the structure itself, I think we'll have to get an engineer involved to make sure we're doing it correctly up there, support the weight. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Oh. I agree that mm -hmm. skylights get to be a problem. They tend to leak that if we have the opportunity that we have to fix it, we might as well close yeah. it up okay. and make it look nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want the library to be there a long time. <coughs> so we're going to offer a motion just to table it for more information. No. no. I'm going to offer a motion to deny the replacement of the skylight at the library, okay. uh, remove it, and then cover the opening and have the building official go out and secure okay. bids for closing up and the lighting a package. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Is flat roof the way to go? I've been told by many people that flat roof if, if it doesn't leak it will well it that's why I guess we're hiring a professional to, to research it and maybe they'll come back and do a pitched roof there and okay. tie into well, it I just maybe that's what standing I was just seam or or flat roots all over town <laughs> you know. 
and then either we we'll get some go options. for it, Elwood. Yeah, we'll get some <laughs> options. Yeah, all right, okay. Elwood will figure it out. Yeah. Any more discussion? <coughs> See none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank Thanks. you, Elwood. Item 7 H. Consider a motion to set a date for a public hearing on the New Orleans Police Department body worn camera policy for Tuesday, December 18, 2018, at 4 30 p.m. I'll offer a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 8A. Consider acceptance of a list of cl claims paid. In and approve a list of claims to be paid. Claims paid in the amount of eight hundred and twenty-four thousand six hundred and thirty-seven dollars and twenty-two cents, and to be paid in the amount of six hundred and ninety-seven thousand five hundred fourteen dollars and sixty-three cents. I'll move it. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those no. Motion carries. But no more business. Meeting adjourned. Roger, aren't you coming back at 6 o'clock? Um, don't wait for me, okay?